Okay, in this dy dynamics lesson, we're going to learn about Newton's second law of motion. These are the learning outcomes. Just some revision. If the net force is zero on the object is zero, what it's saying is that the velocity of the object remains constant. And therefore, acceleration is equal to zero since the velocity is constant. There's no change in velocity. Newton's first law of motion describes what happens to the motion of the object when it's under the influence of balance force or net force is equal to zero. So Newton's second law then takes the next step in terms of describing the motion of the object which is under the influence of unbalanced force. So which net, uh, net force is not equal to zero. So summarize this Newton's first law, net force equals zero, velocity constant, acceleration equals zero. So Newton's second law is if net force is not equal to zero, which means that velocity cannot be constant. And if velocity is not constant, acceleration is not equal to zero. So Newton's second law is simply just saying that if net force is equal to zero, acceleration is not equal to zero. For stationary object, basically if the object is under subjected under balance unbalanced force, it will just start to move towards the stronger force. Okay, this is actually quite uh, logical, as in a tug of war. So if you're a stronger person versus a weaker person, uh, so this person pull 150, this person pull 50. So definitely, if you participate in Tower War, you know that this will start to move towards the stronger person. So from zero, from stationary object to start to move towards the stronger, it means that there's a change in velocity. So whenever there's a change in velocity, that means that there's an acceleration of the object. Or acceleration not equal to zero. But what if the object is already moving in the first place? Okay, so how would that unbalanced force influence the motion of the moving object? Anyway, for discussion purpose, we we'll only restrict ourselves to left and right movement and just taking right as the positive direction. So left is the negative direction. But of course, you can extend the concepts that we're going to discuss to up and down motion. So if you take right uh, up as positive uh, and down as negative. So what are the situations that we will simulate? If the velocity is in the if the moving velocity is already in the positive direction and the net force is also in the positive direction. So if the velocity is in the positive direction but net force is in the negative direction. If the velocity is in the positive negative direction and the net force is also in the negative direction. And if the velocity is in the negative direction and net force is in the positive direction. So right now, let's use this box as the object, and this object is already moving. Okay, let's just assume that it's already moving. Okay, on the smooth icy surface. Right now, uh, moving right is the positive. So right now, it's moving right, and we applied a force that would actually uh, be towards the right. Note, I want you to take note of the speed that's over here, and see what will happen to the uh, object speed. And if we apply rightward force, you can see that the speed will increase. Okay, and if we don't apply, the speed would not uh, increase anymore. Okay, but it will still go on. Okay, so this is the case where it is positive, uh, both force and the velocity is in a positive direction. Okay, you notice that the speed will change, uh, uh, increase. So right now, if what if we apply speed positive and Velocity uh, and force uh, negative. Okay, so we apply the force in this way. Notice that the speed will start to slow down. Okay, and this also makes sense. Okay, uh, one point to take note of is that if you apply a force, it the object does not stop immediately, but would have to slow down. Okay, if we don't apply a force, it will still continue to move towards the right. Okay, so right now let's just apply some more force, and it will eventually stop. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. Okay, let's just apply uh, the negative uh, force and let get it to start moving. Okay, so right now it actually moves towards the left, so this is negative velocity. And let's assume that it is really moving like this, this space. So what will happen is that if we apply more negative forces, 
the speed would also increase. Okay, but in a negative manner. And if you don't apply, it will stop uh, changing its speed. But it will still continue if you don't apply. Okay, since this is a uh, friction, a uh, frictionless ground. Okay, so we find that um, right now, if we use a negative uh, negative velocity, but a positive force in this case, and you realize that the it will start to slow down. Okay, and eventually it will stop. So just a summary, if the velocity of our net force is in the same direction, the object will speed up. So if you have both positive, it will speed up. The same thing if you have both negative, it will also speed up. Okay. Or but if let's say velocity and net force is in opposite direction means that one is positive and one is negative, the object would slow down. Or if the velocity is negative and you have a force positive, the object will also slow down. But no matter which situation, the object will always change its speed of velocity whenever there's a net force or unbalanced force on the object. So this is simply what Newton's second law of motion is trying to describe. Uh, first law and second law can also be described by the following formula. F net equals to MA, where F net is the net force on the object, M is the mass of the object, and A is the acceleration of the object. This is a simpler version that is suitable for secondary school level understanding for now. Okay, F net equals M times A. For objects such as you and I, for, or even for very, very small objects such as protons or electrons, they always have mass. So M is not equals to zero. So coming back to the formula, if F net is equals to zero, net force is equals to zero. Since M is equals to zero, if this is zero, this is not equal to zero, which means that M times A if this is not equal to zero, this must be equal to zero. Okay, so this is what it meant. Can you see that actually this describes the situation of the Newton's first law? It means that Newton's first law, if net force is equal to zero, acceleration equals to zero, and velocity is uh, of course constant. So similarly, if F net is not equal to zero, if this is not equal to zero, and since this is not equal to zero, means that A cannot be zero because if A is zero then the end, this must be zero. Okay, so so can again can you see that this situation of Newton's second law of motion? Okay, Newton's second law of motion states that if net force is not equal to zero, velocity must be changing or actually acceleration must be equal to zero and which leads to velocity must be changing. Okay, another way to uh, the formula describe how object behaves under unbalanced force is to rearrange the variables so that the formula becomes this. Okay, so F net equals to MA. So A is simply we bring down this F uh, M F net is over M. Okay. So consider the following situations. The mass is uh, constant, but F net is a big value or F net is a small value. Okay, what do I mean? It's a scenario that you can relate to. For the same object mass, what is the difference of a motion of the stationary object if you try to push with a bigger force and or if you try to push with a smaller force? I'm sure you get the answer. Okay, bigger force would cause the object to change the velocity more, which acceleration is larger. Smaller force would cause the object to change its velocity less so acceleration is smaller. Or if the object is moving or and you try to slow it down by pushing with a larger, smaller force. With a larger force, I'm sure you are able to slow down by a lot. So velocity change a lot means large acceleration. With a small force, you're only able to slow it down by a little. Velocity change a little, so it's a small acceleration. So figuratively, what it means is that if you have a big net force, okay, your acceleration would be also big. But if you have a small net force, your acceleration value will also be very small. Another situation, mass big or small. Let's say you push stationary objects with the same force. Okay, this time around with the same force, but you push different objects. If you push object X, which is a big mass or heavy object, 
or you push Y, an object with a small mass. And I'm sure you can, if you try to push something that is very heavy, you can realize that X will move very, very slowly. And very slowly means that it cha if there's a small change in velocity, uh, acceleration is actually small. But if you try to push a light object, the, there's a big change in velocity, and so it means that acceleration is big. Likewise, if you tr imagine you try to stop two objects moving at the same speed, say uh, 5 meters per second using the same force, but what if there are two different objects with one is a light toy car and one is a heavy dropping shopping trolley? What's the difference in terms of motion of these objects? You try to stop them. Light car, of course, you can slow it down easily. But heavy trolley, you find that maybe you apply the same force, it actually barely slow down. So in terms of, again, it means that if you have a same force, but you have a different mass, that means that big mass, this denominator number becomes bigger, your acceleration or the ability to change the velocity is small. But if you try to apply the same force, but you apply it on a small object, uh, since the denominator is becoming small, uh, is a small, you find that the acceleration is a bigger number. So can you see that besides net force, the mass of the object also plays a part in influencing how the motion of the object changes. So in generally, the larger the mass, the more difficult for you for the same force to change its velocity. Okay, so stationary larger objects are more difficult to start to move. But if you have a moving larger object, it's also more difficult to slow it down or also uh, make it go faster. Okay, so this is the end of Newton's second law.